I had missed an Armored Skeptic video or two, and it was pointed out, these are the lost tapes of Armored Skeptic. The lost conspiracy files, hidden until now. What they didn't want you to see until this moment. I Satan, our Lord and Savior. Day. Mr. Whiskers, thanks for going a night bot. Ooh, Wednesday to let you do it? Let's go. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the thought. It's Grigori. Hey, fam. Quick question for you guys. Do you think I look more like Jesus? Or do you think that I look more like Lucifer? Okay, look. Are you sure we didn't watch this one? Are you sure we didn't watch this one? Because he's, he's cringing me out right now. This definitely isn't on the playlist, right? Has he just done this before? This feels familiar. Did we do it during the subathon? 50 minutes of it? Hmm. I'm watching it. <laughs> the answer is... Yes. <laughs> so many of the subjects that I've covered in this series have hinged on our understanding that alterations of our perspective, tricks of language, changing an angle, can completely change the context of something. One of the most famous tr Oops. tricks that the occult uses is to turn something upside down. The what? <laughs> the occult? <laughs> Whoa? Okay. The occult employs various symbols and images to evoke a wide variety of complex and abstract concepts and ideas. A lot of the time it's to champion their own philosophical beliefs, but sometimes it's to saturate our minds with those images so that we become more accustomed to them. Holy fucking shit. Sometimes they'll have their symbols out in the open, like the all-seeing eye on the back of the American dollar bill, or they'll hide them, like in the border of the dollar bill rests the wise owl. The Shriner symbol. Can you decode this one with me? The star in the center represents the black hole sun. Can you decode this? Let's go decode it. It's blocking our sun, which is now represented with horns as if it's a solar eclipse. And the curved sword represents the crescent moon. This is the destroyer. This is a symbol of the apocalypse. Of course, yes, obviously. Yes, this is technically satanic. Yes, this is technically evil. But do the Shriners employ this symbol to celebrate the apocalypse? Are they evil devil worshippers that are bent on the destruction of humanity? Or are they simply signifying that they're keepers of the sacred knowledge? I've been asked a million times by now, have I gone crazy? I'm trying to sell you guys ideas that sound so similar to the ones that I used to debunk. But no. Telling you guys about this stuff was always my long-term goal with this channel from day one. I And there it is. Uh, I was never actually a skeptic. I was doing, uh, yeah, I was doing the long con. <laughs> nice. Excellent. I'm just trying to open your eyes. I don't want to teach you the truth. I want to help you see the truth. Yeah. Everything that I've told you in the last few months about Jesus, the green man, the Earth's electromagnetic field, the apocalypse, the Sphinx, I was always gonna tell you that stuff. All the way back in 2014, I was secretly putting occult apocalyptic imagery in my videos. Uh, that's some crazy stuff. That's some crazy unhinged stuff. Mm -hmm. It has to do. <laughs> Wanna be the truth, I mean see the truth. Yeah, this is, come on, come, look. We don't have to go down this route, Greg. It doesn't have to be like this. We can save you. We can save you, Greg. The breakup was bad. I don't think we have to cope and say that this was always the plan. I think, I think you have to ironically have a come to Jesus moment. Skeptic is a character. Everything I do on YouTube is in character. I'm a joker. Skeptic. <laughs> Stop. Oh, God. He's making me do the joker thing. Ah, I'm Jared Leto. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. You're cringe. He's so fucking cringe. Never mind. What I said about saving him, uh, unsavable. That's just like narcotic levels of cringe.
Nick is an atheist, but I was never really an atheist exactly. I still hate religion. That's why I created the Armored Skeptic, to debunk religious dogma. I didn't create him to convince you that God wasn't real. The pivot into uh, conspiracy land is a weird is a weird play, but maybe it has legs now. See, in 2012, I came to a realization: not that God isn't real. No. Are you God? God is real, and God is evil. Oh, okay, uh, that's pretty normal. That's like just. Uh... Cthulhu mythos. Well, I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> this is essentially what the Gnostic Christians <laughs> believe. You. That Jesus came to save humanity from an evil god. And that the serpent in the Garden of Eden was a hero for convincing Eve to eat of the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge. Adam and Eve rebelled from God because the premise of his plan was in- So he created the armored skeptic to combat dogma to replace it with his dogma. That's correct. Entirely flawed. Humanity was set up to fail. Oh the people who hold this Gnostic belief started a tradition of secret societies to preserve this knowledge using secret Luciferian symbolism. And some would call that satanic, and I understand why you're nervous, especially you little Christians out there. But we need to have a conversation right quick about exactly who this Satan is. The word Satan doesn't is mean it green what man? you think it means. No, he's red man, right? Uh-oh. Satan is not a person. And I'd also like to point out that most people who publicly declare themselves to be Satanists are not actually real Satanists, no matter how much they might think that they are. They actually remind me so much more of the kinds of misfits that would follow Jesus around when he was here. They seem like his people. The He's so weird. It has to do. <laughs> and edgy, but like in like the least on like satisfying way, right? Like he he doesn't have his finger on the pulse of what edgy things are nowadays. <laughs> He's like dad edgy. He he would offend someone in the eighties. Uh, God damn it! He's a Kevin Sorbo character. This is where Kevin got the idea for that Let There Be Light movie. Oh, is that is that it? Approaching all edge and no point. That's right. The Church of Satan, at least the public one, seems fairly harmless. I would say that the Church of Christ is a thousand times more evil than the Church of Satan. I'd also like to preface that occult symbolism is really abstract and difficult to get into, a lot of confusing multi-layered meanings behind symbols, and because of that, most of the people who seem to understand it even just a little bit are a bit on the crazy side. But I am not going to let that stop me from telling you guys about it. <laughs> and I hate to be so pretentious, but this really is one of those episodes where I gotta remind you to go back and watch my older videos in this series, otherwise this is not gonna make any sense to you. We have definitely seen them all. But before we get started, a word from our sponsor, Raycon. Psych! In the kitchen. Psych! Psych! Our psych! Thousand. Psych! 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 One of the most simple Smoke As check, occult drop. symbols go, this is one of the most simple. I mean, everyone in the world, I think, seems to understand the basic idea behind the all-seeing eye. <laughs> A idea? Symbolism. That was a symbolism. Godhead figure, or at least it represents the Illuminati or something. People get that it means bad, or smart, or connected. But there are hundreds of these symbols. Luckily, there are resources we can use to study the origins and meanings and their multi-layer uses, as well as how they're integrated into modern society. I remember my kid brother getting nervous a while back, asking me about symbols like he was admitting that he committed a crime or something. Uh, dude, everybody knows this shit. There are multiple secret societies. Everybody knows this shit. Nah. ...studies and mystery traditions Not that really, offer though. wisdom to their initiates, <laughs> as well as power, protection, wealth, and prestige, Not cults, clubs, and roundtable groups who may or may not secretly pull the strings from behind the scenes. Using these symbols to secretly communicate with... Uh... 
We should have been saying Skeptaint Bingo this whole time. Damn. Each other and assert dominance over the world. Ooh. Here's the thing, though. I don't give a f about any of that. That shit's boring to me. I see the whole idea of ultra wealthy elites secretly pulling the strings from behind the scenes as an it is what it is sort of thing. I don't tend to stress over things that I can't control. I just see that as part of the world. I know on the Ah, uh, it's leftism, baby. Greggy. That's the lane of leftism, my dog. Come on over, actually. I mean, we probably don't need more woo-woo shit over here. Surface all the drama and intrigue. We already have all these fucking religious ones. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know what the hell happened with these guys. The secret group seems important, and I guess technically it is. But this is a warning to you, my dear viewer, because I love you so much. Diving down the rabbit holes of secret Illuminati control of the world is the fastest route to insanity. Tread lightly. Don't get too invested. And I know I seem like the kind of guy that would join the Masons or something, but I find the idea of joining kind of claustrophobic. Plus, I don't need goat fur between my thighs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, I wanted to talk about this. No, I don't. Is that a Mason joke? Is that a Satan joke? Is it you want you have to fuck a goat to be in there? Is that how you do a Mason? You be fuck a goat? I don't know what he's insinuating. That's what he's making me think. This stuff with you guys all the way back in 2014, but I can't just come out and be like, hey guys, I'm a wise man and expect you to just trust that. I yeah, I actually have to show you I'm wise and you should listen to me, wowzers. This is good stuff, Greg. I have to demonstrate that I know what I'm talking about. And I've been pretty good at providing evidence for my theories so far. But moving forward in this series, I'm going to have to rely on you guys trusting me more and more. Oh boy. Because there aren't exactly archaeological finds to support every part of our history. Oh. So this is kind of the perfect time for me to reveal myself to you guys. This entire channel and everything I do on this channel is a reference to the green man Jesus. We were right! We were fucking right! Everything's green, man! We were right! We were right! We were right! It always has been. Armored Skeptic is the green man. Obviously, he's a black and white clown, a joker, Obviously. a protector of truth, and an agent of wisdom. Like a god, he protects us from orbit above the earth, as well as in a castle at the top of a mountain. <laughs> Did chat GPT write this? In my video, Jesus and the Apocalypse, I talk about how the green as man- As well as in a mountain. That is where we put knights. Knights are in fortresses and they protect. Is not just the god of wisdom, but also the protector of the earth, the Aurora Borealis. What we would call the Eye of Horus is really the Wojat Eye. It Wojak. represents the snake goddess Wojat, who Wojak. was the protector of the Garden of Eden. In That's pop right. culture, the Wojat Eye is represented by the Superman logo uh -huh. with the right pyramid there. and the snake. It's just the same exactly. The channel and character name Armored Skeptic includes the initials A and S. The pyramid and the snake but also the very first time you ever see armored skeptics legs it's the first visual gag in the entire channel all the way back in 2014 he's wearing superman boxers wow. my mannequin of the green man is also bare legged as a constant reminder to not take me seriously i described in my christmas episode how santa claus is actually an enemy of the green man he's he's red string theorying his own continuity retroactively to create the I'm a crazy person narrative or it really all has been a ruse since 2014 and he's always come across as weird and insecure because he's actually a paranoid fucking guy hmm <clears throat> Well, his boxers say, I'm not Santa. 
but you can sit on my lap. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> the name Armored Skeptic is an <laughs> anagram. <laughs> it unscrambles to say computerized arc. Like, computerized arc of knowledge? As in, he's the digital god of wisdom. Or you... You self-describe yourself as... The, the, <laughs> like the a wisdom god of knowledge guy? Greg. Or the YouTube green man. Oh, also, Armored fuck. Skeptic's mother is Jewish, which technically means he's Jewish. The angel and demon represent the duality of his character. Okay. He's both a corrupt man, an animal bound to this world, that's capable of- This is, this is, this is Armored Skeptic's own lore dump. He just couldn't take it anymore and he's like, okay, players, lore dump! Dude, you're a knight in a helmet, Tux. You don't need boxers to be a joke. Oh, no. Uh, I know what to take from all this. Shu has a really strange taste in men. Yeah, she does. This is revealing. <laughs> Love and compassion, but he's also a divine god uh -huh. who's above sin, but is also capable of wrath and destruction. The real switch on this channel from threat, skeptical bro? content to believer content. Okay. Uh, Leander, I haven't been here for any of this. Is he literally talking about himself as a deity? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, kind of, yeah. Dude just randomly mentioned his character is Jewish like it implied something. Curious. Started with this sketch where Commander Gregory Irons is set to fly a Tesla rocket to Mars dressed like an ancient fish god wearing an all-seeing eye helmet on top of a flying Orion phallus. Gregory's rocket crashes into the waters above which causes him to be transported into another realm. He crosses through the veil. He sees the Antichrist dancing behind him before the angel and devil take him to be executed. We're left to believe that Gregory Gregory dies at the end, but it's revealed years later that it's actually Skeptic who died, and there's a visual gag revealing that Gregory has now become Jesus. I... It is a little concerning that the way he is delivering this is so earnest. <laughs> like, he... He... He has built a delusion. Like a whole one. Who boy. This is fascinating shit. The character that I'm playing now. Skeptic uh -huh. and Gregory have now merged into one character. Gregory now takes over the mantle as Green Man with the pyramid and the snake in the center of his chest. Skeptic uh -huh. dies and comes back to life several times in the storyline, but his first significant death, he comes back to life on a spaceship that- Is this like... It's, it's fucking crazy that he has a whole other channel that we've never watched that has all of this stuff. And chat, I feel like I know what you're thinking. I feel like you're thinking, Jake, we should watch Armored Skeptic's little fucking lore videos. <laughs> I agree. I, I would like to find the fucking... The, is this a channel? It's shaped like the Alpha and the Omega in orbit above the Earth. Is it? Skeptic's rebirth is facilitated by a sphinx that also has the face of the green man. In one sketch, Skeptic's ship fought a green bird ship above the Earth representing the Great Phoenix. And at one point, Skeptic's ship destroys the pyramids and also crashes into Silicon Valley. All references to different apocalyptic events past. The Why, though? The Armored Media logo, too, is shaped like Saturn, a UFO. This is an Omega, but it's bookended by two letter A's, making it the Alpha and the Omega. Oh my god, dude. <sighs> this is like... I can't tell how much of this is like thought and how much is like was it like post hoc like how 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 much yeah right 
Is it all post hoc? Is it all made up? Did he mean to do that? Because it seems like he's red stringing his own shit. Plus, it includes a smiley face in the back because several people described the Destroyer as being a smiley face. Every single episode of my cartoons and movie reviews began with this image slowly fading out in the sky above a castle which is in Scotland. The Armored Media logo represents Satan testing Jesus at the top of the earth. <laughs> it has to do? Okay. Uh... <clears throat> Okay, I need to tell you I found out my keyboard can do web website shortcuts, so I have a corn button that opens your Twitch on my keyboard. Now that's cute, because I gave you the corn uh, key. That's cute. Uh, no pickles. Thanks for the biddies. It just it fucking stacks. When I feel like I understand what he has said, he is just three more insane things. It's like we have been kidnapped by a serial killer who has taken my arm and he's told me it's going to get worse. I don't think it's quite that bad. But yeah, it does stack. He always has another fucking crazy thing to say. This was exemplified in the last animation I did, uh -huh. The Death of Skeptic, where the apocalypse is literally happening above the castle. The logo fades out to reveal that the destroyer is right behind it. But the destroyer is defeated when the baby green man, shaped like a green cross, rises into the sky to meet the tentacle monster. Yeah, of course. Turning the Earth into the new age of animation, the age of Aquarius. Jur During the apocalypse, the Earth's electromagnetic what? field, or the Aurora Borealis, becomes weaker. Look at his eyes, dude. Unhinged. It dims. Well, Armored Media 2 is an anagram. It unscrambles to say, dimmed aurorae as in the earth's electromagnetic field is weakening my logo is literally warning you that the apocalypse is coming this oh is it is that what this is doing okay thanks for the warning man like how how do you think that this is fucking like a coherent but be like a reasonable way to live. This yeah. is the image that begins every video. I also like to include my name in the opening credits. Gregory Fleur roughly trans Fleur? Is that how you say it? Oh, neat. Translates to protector and guardian of the field. <laughs> he loves that though. That's true. But the field that it's talking about is a farm and ancient people called farms gardens. So if you really want to stretch the meaning of my name, it translates to protector and guardian of the garden. Insane, dude. But I'll admit, that's entirely my ego. That's that's just me, guys. <laughs> when I first Only that part is his ego. And then nothing else. Caught my stride on this channel, I made what was at the time a really big video <laughs> defending the position of atheism. And it included a sketch where Skeptic summons Satan to help him remember his own origin. We learn that Skeptic used to be the Archangel Michael chasing around the evil eye of Odin, until he was one day given a body and zapped with plasma and imbued with knowledge, becoming Adam, the first green man. Then another angel comes to fight Satan, and they destroy- Creationist cat, yay. And also, this was a guy, a Ransona. This was a, literally a Ransona. ...each other right in front of Skeptic. I don't remember who it was, though. All as a test of Skeptic's loyalty. This is a representation of Satan testing Jesus at the top of the earth at the beginning of the Gospels. Then not long after that... Are you going to say the Harold Penisman thing was part of it? It has to do. I think it's so much funnier now that the Harold Penisman tract was uh, about a little freak guy that had conspiracy theories, and I love that he was part of it now. <laughs> This last bit shows it's post hoc since it was a parody of the CC intro and no shot Vadim was in on it. Uh, was, wasn't was in on it? Oh, you mean, oh yeah, Vadim wasn't in on the uh, the symbolism. Uh, I would love to maybe... Uh, it has to if, do. If Vadim actually is uh, into the conspiracy that Greg is peddling, I would love to talk to him about it. Uh, if he's not, then... Uh, now! <laughs> Uh, is this guy just Neil Breen if he made shitty atheist vids and sketches instead of movies? I guess so. 
I did an even more complex animation where Skeptic travels the internet like Neo through- I think he's a little- I think he's just being a little pissy. People don't appreciate his videos more. The thumb is backwards on this. I don't like that. Harold- Harold Penisman is the green man? Fuck, true. The Matrix and goes on an epic adventure where he meets God and battles the Great Phoenix with Jesus. Those two videos where I show the sketch of Skeptic. I'm pretty sure that was uh, actually. Battles the Great Phoenix with Jesus. This was a fucking. This was a collaboration with a guy. I forgot the name. The, the parrot was actually a, a, the ransona of a guy back in the day. Di dinosaur guy, dino, ah, fuck man, I don't remember. He's an evolution guy. Those two videos where I show the sketch of Skeptic being tested by Satan and learning his origin, as well as the video where he meets God and fights the Great Phoenix, were uploaded to bookend my 30th birthday and start the entire storyline of the Skeptic character. Gotcha, so, bro. one might say that I began my ministry. Fucking Jesus. When he was 30. Oh my God. Just fucking get crucified then, dude. <laughs> like, put yourself on the cross already. Good Lord, bro. Just. <laughs> God. On my 30th bro. birthday. Oh. And that all began Jeez. after I uploaded my first video in March of 2014. Exactly eight years ago today. Wow. Uh. <laughs> it's actually a really good shot. <laughs> I like that. The infinity symbol, eternal life. And That's infinity right. is also how much I love you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and my plaid shirts. Green man. My fish scales. <laughs> so. This was my big reveal, fam. I've been playing the long game. Welcome to my world. <laughs> I am Gregory Fleur, the goddamned armored skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Genesis and the Torah come first in order- So fucking cringe, my dude. Just... Ugh. It's- I'm embarrassed. <laughs> it's like embarrassing to watch. Order. The book of Job is actually the oldest book in the Bible. Not a lot of people know that. You could almost say that the entire premise of the- It's so- it's so wild. So he- I mean, he's calling himself like, you know. Jesus, Garden of Eden guardian, you know, the green man himself. He's here to tell it, save the world, man. The Abrahamic faith can be derived from the logic that's created in the book of Job. This is where we have developed the- What you say about you can Job is Genesis and the Torah come- <laughs> hear what he actually says. Even though Genesis and the okay. Torah come first in order, uh -huh. the book of Job is actually the oldest book in the Bible. I think that's true, maybe. Not a lot of people know that. You could almost say that the entire premise of the Abrahamic faith can be derived from the logic that's created in the book of Job. This is where we have developed the idea that God and some Satan character are betting against each other for the souls of humanity. In this book is an example where this Satan tests one of God's most loyal followers to try to break his faith. Satan is trying to demonstrate that the rules God has set in this world are not fair. But God wins this round as Job maintains his faith. But in this story, this particular character that we call Satan is not THE Satan. There isn't just one Satan. He's not a single person. That's true. Satan means the stopper, the blocker, the hinderer. Uh, it does in some places. Well, I mean, Satan does. It's in the story of the uh, the guy with the donkey. What's that guy's name? Fucking, uh... Why can't I think of his name? Uh, the donkey guy. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, like, obstacle. 
<clears throat> it's a title. There are several Satans yeah, in the, the Bible, opposer. each of which has a completely different relationship with God. Jesus even calls his first apostle Peter Satan. But I think we can all agree that Peter was never Satan, nor was he channeling Satan, nor is he damned to hell. Also, there is no devil or Satan in hell. The idea of Satan ruling over hell is really more of a modern conception. In fact, the Bible implies that hell is ruled by God and that he's appointed his own angels to torment the deceased. Not only does the Bible say that Satan is here on this earth, but that Satan is the God of this earth. Uh... He's going to go into Lucifer stuff. He's going to go into sun worship. He's going to say the sun. He's going to say the sun is a solar flare, is Satan. And the Bible's always been talking about solar flares. The Father has in fact bargained humanity against this particular Satan character to see who can win the most souls at the end of the judgment. If the Father is willing to bet the souls of humanity against this other person, this other person is not just some random angel. He must have a godly role. The creator god has set a bet <clears throat> against the rebel god. But the Satan character that most people seem familiar with is Lucifer. Lucifer is the character that most of the Illuminati and the occult venerate. The He's literally the god of wisdom in the Bible. And what's happening to Lucifer in the story? He's being chewed out by an angel of the Lord for screwing up. For defying God's plan. He's the rebel God. Lucifer is being a Satan to the Father, not to us. The angel then goes on to describe that Lucifer has been here since the beginning and witnessed the creation of the earth. Who does that sound like to you? Adam and Eve were the first rebels. They ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. They did that on purpose. The serpent didn't trick them. They chose to do it. And the knowledge they learned while eating of the fruit, they developed empathy. They learned that not all bad acts are done out of evil and not all good acts are done out of love. Adam was the first Pharaoh of the earth. He was supposed to be the leader of humanity, but he wasn't taught empathy. He was taught rule. The Denisovan, the El, the Elohim, they're like the Vulcans. They didn't have empathy. Adam was Boy. God of this earth. He was the Pharaoh of- <laughs> Okay, so for those who have missed it, the Denisovans uh, and that, they were giant people who Greg claims ruled the lands once upon a time uh, and gave us like Atlantis technologies and stuff. And apparently um, were Adam's like descendants. <clears throat> all of humanity when he developed compassion for who is, who adam is real by the way. humanity he left the garden and became fallen he became one of humanity's heroes the descendants of the line of adam became the heroes of old the men of renown these were the supermen the gregory these guys the gregory were so jacked it was just obvious that they were heroes. I always wanted to try to demonstrate how the T-pillars and these hooded figures represented the sons of God at Gobekli Tepe. These were the earliest cone heads. Their strange shaped heads depicting what they looked like before they adopted the head binding tradition. I also wanted to prove to you one day that these figures represent the guardians. The Gregory, the sons of Adam. <laughs> These were taken from Gobekli Tepe. The sons of Adam. He keeps saying this. Adam statues. protected sapiens from monstrous giants known as the sons of Cain. The story in Genesis is that Cain failed to receive God's favor. Angry that God didn't love him, he murdered his own brother, Abel. God punished Cain for being a murderer by marking his forehead and sending him off to live in seclusion. That entire allegory is to describe a subspecies of Denisovan hybrid that they called the Sons of Cain. They were dangerous. If you oh. saw one, you avoided it. The Sons of Cain oh. had an extra ridge on their forehead above their brow ridge making them look like a Klingon. Here's a Klingon flooded up to the neck with mud. I just thought 
That was a fitting image. Because of the mud flood? Greg? Well, very recently, in a settlement next to Gobekli Tepe called Karahan Tepe, they uncovered a statue head that depicts a son of Cain. If you read into this, they're going to tell you that this is depicting a man wearing a mask. There's a thousand reasons why that doesn't make sense, that one of the earliest stone carving civilizations would make a piece of art so meta when they could have just created a statue of the thing that the guy was wearing a mask of. No, this is what their heads were shaped like. This <laughs> It's so weird when he just is like, okay, so here's the evidence for this thing, and then he abandons evidence and starts just saying stuff. <laughs> it's just like a weird way to live, man. This is why they eventually did head binding. Of and just as the sons of Cain were extremely recognizable, the sons of Adam <laughs> were extremely recognizable. Mr. Chad Jaws. Gordo is son of Cain, confirmed. True! They looked like supermen, but it wasn't dude, just dude. as simple as sons of Adam, good guys, sons of Cain, bad guys. The sons of Adam also battled the sons of God, represented with Superman fighting Lex Luthor, the cone-headed authoritarian. This is the secret war that's going on under our noses. And there He's are bald. secret societies that keep that's track of all of these different bloodlines. Today, the remaining descendants of the gods are- This is the worst and therefore the best Are, are wealthy been. elite, <laughs> celebrities, aristocrats, the royals. Even the royal family is descended from Vlad the Impaler. The gods never left. They just changed what they call themselves. The sons of Adam were represented with the satyr, a very naturalistic god of fertility that lived out in the wilderness. I'm a god of fertility. And they had kind of a bit of a devious look to them. I don't know. I don't see it. Like, he continues to be like, mm, get it, get it. Do you, I think I am one of the fucking descendants of Adam, and I'm Jesus. Like, do you get it, dude? <laughs> Ugh. But the rumor is there are also secret societies that keep certain bloodlines under wraps, protected. The Freemasons, of course, are the most famous club today. Supposedly, they're a continuation of the tradition of the Knights Templar. They mostly operate as a club of chums who agree to help each other and share secret knowledge and wisdom in exchange for swearing an oath to their order. And the Knights Templar are also linked to a special secret group called the Rosicrucians, who supposedly keep track of the bloodline of the descendants of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. Nerds, I wonder if that means that they're following the line of the mitochondrial DNA of Mary Magdalene and the Y chromosome of Jesus. The Templar... That's right. That's what they're doing. That's what they've been doing for centuries. <laughs> ...are also believed to be linked to mysteries in North America, such as the Oak Island Vault in Canada. Oh. He's an Oak Island guy. Isn't there a fucking TV show about this? Mormon Jesus. Sirius, thank you. Uh, we're watching Armored Skeptic uh, descend down a rabbit hole so deep that on the other side of it, he's decided that he is, I mean, kind of Jesus, guys. I'm not making that up. He's actually unhinged. So, yeah, welcome, Sirisers. Thought to predate the first French and Spanish Thank explorers. Of Sirs is good people. Go follow it has if you don't. To do. There's a seven season show about Oak Island. It's hilarious how dumb Oak Island shit is. <laughs> Variety of historical treasures are kept. We could watch. Can we watch Oak Island? That would be fucking hilarious. If they find gold, I'll buy pizza. <laughs> you can't save me? That's fucked up. Sealed in them? a complex, nope. multi-layered trap vault designed to collapse in on itself, fill in with water, and kill potential treasure hunters. Which it has done several times already. But who created the Oak Island Vault? And why did they come to Canada in the first place? What's the middle lava lamp? Aeroflux. There are also a handful of fake 
Are you talking to me? I don't know. Secret knowledge clubs that popped up as pop culture phenomenon over the years. The Priory of Scion. Well, he he is he is a conspiracy theorist now. This is the video where he said, "Guys, I've been a conspiracy theorist since 2014. I was just being really super secret about it. I'm not even joking. He literally says that. Uh, and if you miss that, uh, well, you should subscribe immediately and follow immediately because uh, we've been going through this, and you can become abreast of the situation." We've been going through all of this. I have many videos on this that you can go back on the YouTube with, too. And as a perfect example want to dive this. In. It seemed pretty... I mean, he believes a whole fucking grand unifying conspiracy theory that he thinks, essentially, that he's at the center of. It's fucking crazy. Legitimate at first, but then it turned out the whole thing was cooked up so that the author of this fake secret society could plump himself up to look like he's some sort of a secret king that's been living in society dejected waiting for his chance to sit on the throne again god could you believe somebody would do that spin up an elaborate story to make themselves look like a secret special king some people have no shame it's possible wow. that the knights templar brought the descendants of Talking about himself mary and jesus here to canada where i live wait i was supposed to read that back uh i have my we have our own uh, channels as well uh on this one right here it's in chat right <laughs> now nah, there it is you can go to the youtube right there and i have all sorts of stuff uh including look the one we did the other day this one right here where he talks about this kind of shit uh it's really great and also i made uh food that you can watch soon Oop. during the da vinci code part not because of not because of me guys because uh because the character i'm playing internet internet jesus he's canadian I'm going to try to fix that and edit it. There are also... It's crazy that he he's like lampshading this because he's a little embarrassed that he's so insane that he thinks that he's internet, he's Canadian Jesus. But also he's like, I mean, he can't stop talking about it. He can't stop saying, guys, I actually think I'm this guy. So countless highly coveted religious and sacred artifacts that the Knights Templar and several other occult groups have collected and hidden over the years, like... The Ark of the Covenant, nobody knows where that is. Apparently, the Knights Templar have the Holy Grail. Though there's a lot of debate as to what that means exactly. It doesn't really matter though, that's all junk. The only artifact that I care about is King Solomon's Ring of Power and Wisdom. And as dumb as it sounds, the Lord of the Rings is based on this ring. According to the occult, not only did King Solomon use geopolymers to build his temple, but he also... Geopolymers. Wow. That's a specific video that he's referencing. Employed the help of the spirits of the dead to do the heavy lifting. The oh, legend no, says, "No, bro, come on, man." That by wearing that ring, <sighs> King Solomon was able to command the dead to do his bidding. God damn it! <clears throat> and I want it. <laughs> they weren't just any dead spirits, though. These were demons. Demon is the derogatory term that we use to describe the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. According to the Book of Enoch, God has punished the Nephilim for their sins by forcing them to wander the earth without a body until the final judgment. There is a ring of power in Lord of the Rings, but the item in Lord of the Rings that best represents the power of King Solomon's ring is Aragorn's sword. By wielding that sword, he's able to command the army of the dead. Kind of, but not really, sort of, kind of. It's like part of it, but not really. Like, it isn't just the sword, but whatever. We don't have to get into it. The reason I bring this up, well, the leader of the fallen angels, the leader of the Nephilim, was an angel like called and everything, man. Azazel. Azazel is also one of the Satans. In my last ghost hunting video, that- He has a cute little bob in both these. <laughs> he looks like, uh, he looks like the bad guy in No Country for Old Men. <laughs> Anton Sugar. He looks like Anton Sugar with his little bob. What was Azazel calling himself Beelzebub? <laughs> Wah, 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 wah. Name somebody that's with me right now.
we got a spirit that screams here, trying to be really scary. You too much of a baby to say your name over the radio? Tell me your name. And insulting me by calling me Lucifer, Prince of Darkness? <laughs> is this... This is a video of Dave... Uh, not Dave. Uh, fucking Greg. I'm infected. We watched too much today. Three hours is too much. Is this a video of Greg? Believing that he has recorded ghosts talking about him? this video fuck dude fuck. there's definitely three syllables like lucifer pause lucifer Call prince of name. darkness that'd be fun yeah azazel isn't allowed to have a body right now and he is pissed about it Look, man. <laughs> but he has every reason to be. He believes he's Lucifer because the ghost in the magic radio box scam said it. Oh. The Archangel Michael defeated Azazel, casting him down to the earth, forcing him to endure God's punishment. However, afterwards, the Archangel Michael realize that Azazel was right. But it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. There's really only a couple of forms of Satan worship that I consider true Satan worship. All right. The first one being All right, we're talking about Baal worship. And I don't mean you say you love Baal, you say you worship Baal, you've got all his figurines. No, I mean legitimate baby sacrifices, torture sacrifices, boiling a newborn calf in its mother's milk. And the other form of Satan worship that I would ask that you stay away from is Saturn worship. And again, I'm not saying you watch Saturn, you love Saturn. I mean, literally, you worship and celebrate the destruction of the Earth that occurs every X number of years. And I know that's confusing because I said that Saturn worship is- He is on some stuff, man. Uh, things we learned about Greg. One, is the internet god of wisdom. Two, a fertility god. Three, wants a ring to control undead demons. Four, believes he talked to a ghost using a seance. True. From mother worship, but I'm not talking about mother worship. Most mother worship traditions date back to when Saturn was still lit. Uh -huh. Back when the second sun was still giving off light. Mm -hmm. The story of the god Saturn devouring his own sons is the story of our second sun collapsing and becoming the Satan, no longer giving off light. This is the same god that's called Jupiter, but it's also called Kronos. So he's... Greg, Greg is worried about people genuinely being Baal or Saturn worshippers. That's the ones you got to stay away from, guys. Like there's little pockets of those worshippers around. Time. Saturn is time. It governs the time of our solar system. Have you ever heard of the effects of a black hole? The closer you are to one, the more time is affected around you. Well, the mother creates this bubble of time around our solar system that we exist within. Uh -huh. That might as well be reality to us. We're trapped inside of that bubble like the Matrix. It has so I assume he thinks the mother is a sun that we used to have in the solar system, binary solar, or yeah, yeah, binary solar system. It went out. That's the Satan, but it's looming around there like Planet X, and will someday destroy us or something. And it has something to do with the magnetosphere, uh, the Matrix. Oh yeah, but also we're in the Matrix, guys. Uh, this is as coherent as a high school D and D pantheon when your edgy DM friend combined all the cool stuff from Mythos he barely knows. True like a prison. But time is also a good thing because we exist in a three-dimensional form and time helps give us context for our lives, but I'm going to do a whole episode on time later. I was I almost said it some other time. Saturn is the Satan. 
If ever there was a Satan, Satan is literally Saturn. Oh, never mind. But it used to be the mother. Most mother worship traditions date back to when the sun gave off light. Back then, the second sun was called Venus. The goddess with the red hair representing the soft orange glow that the second sun used to emit. During this time, the ancient people referred to her as the superior sun. This was a golden age for humanity. In the story of the Garden of Eden, there's a theme of humanity transitioning from a period of hunter-gatherers when food was plentiful, to all of a sudden, humanity needs to learn how to farm to survive. Yeah. Uh, some people uh, who are hinge and have sociology degrees and anthropology degrees tend to think uh, of it as an allegory about the agricultural revolution, which I think is pretty cool, right? Um, I really like to read the Bible, or liked to, uh, because it's like, it's sort of like, oh, look at these people that didn't understand shit and how they tried to understand shit and where they got it wrong and why it was interesting or maybe useful or maybe harmful. You know, maybe it sounded intuitive but wasn't right. Like, it's cool, it's interesting, but like, this is unhinged. This transition period happened after the second sun stopped giving off light. That was the end of the Golden Age, likely ended by the very first apocalypse. I don't know, this is a classic image, but when you zoom in on it, it looks like something that if you put it on Twitter today, people will be like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. And I'm thinking yep. that this likely happened tens of thousands of years before- I like that painting too. But I feel like we're just so fucking jaded. Or the Great Flood even. I always imagined no, that it no had to be of... somewhere around the 30,000 year mark, because that's when we start to see hybrids showing up in the fossil record. So I'm thinking human humanity hybrids. has to start to intermingle and- I forgot about the human hybrids, Chad. If you're not abreast of the human hybrids, well, you're going to lose something during this ad. You should subscribe immediately. But you didn't. You could interrupt this at any time. We could partay right the fuck out of here cohabitate more partay, because food Jack. is not as plentiful anymore well i present to you the adderant it's a 33,000 like year old orion figure carved in ivory Ooh. a sword between his legs and his arms above his head uh -huh. exactly in the pose that the constellation orion would have been in 33,000 years ago People have pointed out that the arms look very similar to horns. They're carved with etches the same way people carved horns back then. But it's also in the shape of a crescent moon. So people are debating, is this a moon god? Is this a bull god? Or is this Orion? All of them. Guys, that's all apocalypse imagery. What if this is the first apocalypse? Yes, I am talking about the second sun. Not okay, yeah, he's gonna go into it. Not our literal planet Saturn. However, it seems like the occult uses the literal planet Saturn as a representation of these principles in art and religion anyways. <laughs> the Death Star in Star Wars, for example, oh. represents Saturn the Destroyer. Yes. Obviously. But of did you- Obviously. Idiots. You know that the Death Star looks exactly like one of Saturn's moons? Is this real? I don't know, but this is what they show us. Yep. And what- It's real. What, what a coinky dink. We call the Star of- Just like- exactly like it. 100% exactly like it. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I don't know, but this is what they show us. And what we call the Star of David is actually the Seal of Solomon. Uh -huh. This also represents Saturn. Mm -hmm. The points of the star also That's represent right. the Medusa sunburst crown of the destroyer. But also the center of this symbol resembles Saturn's North Pole. Is this real? I don't know, but this is what they show us. If you turn a cube on its side, it also makes the same hexagonal shape. So there's a cube in there? If you ever notice an office building or something with a giant black cube out front, or even a giant black sphere, that's Saturn worship. Oh. The black hole sun. But the. Do? 
Oh, this is cool. Uh, why is it always got to come back to Jews? Wait. That wasn't all that. This? Was this that? What? Was Saturn's sphere at the Vatican, I think, is the craziest one because it depicts two separate layers of civilizations being buried under two separate layers of Earth. Do you guys know about this, or am I... Is that the, is the, are those civilizations? Going too fast for you. And since we're here, we might as well talk about it. Remember, this is a garden religion. A lot of the lore in the Garden of Eden is about lore regarding animals that live in the gardens, okay. in the farms. People would have noticed that there are worms that live in fruit trees and worms that live in the soil. So to explain the ones in the soil, their lore was they were cursed for convincing Eve to eat the fruit. You think they meant worms? If there was ever a real serpent, my headcanon is that that was Lilith returning back to the garden to teach Adam oh, and course. Eve what she had learned after she left. Yeah, obviously. Perhaps it was Lilith that was the Satan that taught Adam and Eve empathy. Besides his disciples, the only people who immediately recognize Jesus for who he is... Spirit science. Think Jews have magic? Oh, Jesus. ...were demons, and he was able to command them. The whole idea of that dates back to King Solomon. It's one of the ways that the Bible is indicating that Jesus is in fact a descendant of King David. Christian theologians have suggested for a very long time that Jesus actually lived multiple lifetimes, oh. and some of them are even mentioned in the Bible. The most popular- Oh, I wonder which lifetime he's living now. Could it possibly be not any of, of these people who had historical impact but you? of which is Malchi- p -meal! It's trying to start some momentum! Five of them! Get one a blue room. He who barks at cats, Iggy Poop, Wampa, and Red Fire Firehand. Thank you so much. Melchizedek. Melchizedek was metal as oh, fuck. He was basically an astrology recording wizard. If he was alive today, he would have been best friends with Christopher Lee. Melchizedek lived at the exact same time as Abraham, so he was definitely not Abrahamic. He was pagan. And that's one of those pagan. things that is kind of uncomfortable for Christians to talk about. It opens up this premise that Jesus wasn't always living lifetimes as this spotless, perfect lamb of God. Sometimes he was just living his life like a human being. It doesn't matter. I could spend all day trying to prove to you that Jesus is Lucifer. I didn't know that's what he was doing. I thought he was trying to prove that he was Jesus. But I don't need to. Jesus literally told us that he is. Oh. Jesus said, quote, cool. I am the morning star. He's literally saying he's Lucifer. Do you think Jesus, of all people in the entire universe, uh -huh. wouldn't know that by saying he's the morning star, he's saying that he's that same God of wisdom from earlier in the Bible? I think he was saying he was like the sunrise, but whatever. And by so, saying that he is the son of Adam, he's saying that he is the reincarnation of Adam. Oh. He is the rebel God. He is the green man. And you could see why someone wouldn't want to just come out and admit that they're this person. Because it could open a whole can of worms. The whole world has already been set up to believe that Lucifer... Uh, Greg would be not the most unique person in this regard. Uh, there are a few other people, um, a handful, uh, that have also said that, that they themselves were Jesus, actually. Uh, this is a normal... A normal thing. Everyone goes through a phase where they claim that they're Jesus. Is Satan. That Lucifer is Antichrist. Uh -huh. If Jesus were to come back today, the Christians would be the first to persecute him. I often this hear people stumbling unhinged. over the concept of Jesus sacrificing himself to God to save humanity. <coughs> How does that work? Why did Jesus die on the cross in the first place? I even hear atheists making fun of this. God sacrificed himself to God. For God. No, that's not how it works. First of all, by the virtue of their being... I love the idea of the armored skeptic defending uh, Jesus's, like, reincarnation here, or I guess, uh, <laughs> resurrection.
being a trinity implies that there's disagreement. If they all agreed, it would only be one. This all goes back to that same bargain that Lucifer made with God in the book of Job for the souls of humanity, as well as Adam and Eve's rebellion from God out of the Garden of Eden. Jesus sacrificed himself to save Ew. humanity because the rules God set for us to get out of here, the tests that we have to endure to ascend to the next level, are not fair. We are set up to fail. Jesus broke the game and defeated hell, allowing us all to reincarnate every time we die. Oh my goodness gracious. So that's what you're thinking? Oh. This guy calls himself a skeptic, that's right, but it's an anagram, don't worry. And the irony is, he did it by living a perfect life the way that God demands. The rebel won by following the rules. Thousands of people have died deaths worse than Jesus. It's not amazing that he died such a terrible death. It's amazing that he of all people lived the perfect life when he was the one that taught us that doing so was total bullshit. Now when you get to the pearly gates at the end, it doesn't matter how much God thinks that you're a sinner. It doesn't matter how much he wants to send you to hell for eternity. If you tell God that you're with Jesus, he has to let you in. Those are the rules. Wow. Cool. I win. The term Antichrist is exactly like the term Satan. It's just a title. It, it means someone or something that is against Christ. My favorite part of the Green Man story is when he gave up the spiritual war thing to become the mascot for a Minnesota canned vegetable company. Blue Earth for the win. True. The Book of Revelation never says the brownies. word Antichrist. Ever. There are several different characters in the Bible that your local pastor probably tried to convince you were the Antichrist. But there's this one particular character, it's definitely not him. You know what, I'm just going to describe him the way that the Christians describe him. Keep in mind everything that I've been telling you for the past three years, alright? In the end times, the Antichrist is going to try to unite all the religions and convince them that they've all been worshipping the same messiah. Lucifer. So, if you guys see someone that looks like a son of Adam going around trying to convince people that all the religions are the same religion and that he's the messiah of all of them. That's, that's what he's doing. It's so fucking unhinged. And that we're all leading into the end times. Watch out for that guy. The metaphor for the light bringer is really simple. The morning star is the light bringer that appears right before the sun. He literally thinks he's this guy. This is unhinged. Lucifer is the light bringer that appears right before the apocalypse. Whoa, next segment. Yeah. He he can't help it. He he like has to, he has to, uh, it's like a tick. It's a tell. It's his poker tell. We're moving on to the next segment because he built in this like lukewarm mic drop situation. I've talked at length about how the story. What did I say? I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. You'd fucking me up. Man. Remembering our story. Okay. I've talked at length about how the story of the Green Man, the story of Orion right, and his journey check. to the apocalypse, is the never-ending story of humanity, our connection to the eternal, our connection to the living God. We call this the hero's journey. The story of the apocalypse is a story that we tell over and over again in humanity. It seems every artist has a connection to this story whether they know it or not. I'm so thankful for all the artists, musicians, creators, what have you, that have kept this secret knowledge alive, that have depicted it in their art so that I have a plethora of material to draw from. I mean, I used to review movies. I'm a huge movie nut. 
<laughs> because I love the hero's journey. A perfect example of this is in the film The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Parnassus? The like film movie, is actually. obviously esoteric as hell. The film starts with a room full of wizards telling different parts of the same story. Satan enters the room and tries to convince the wizards to stop. But the wizards insist that they have to keep telling this story in order for the world to continue to exist. And that is exactly what I'm doing with this series. I'm casting a spell of renewal on the planet. Yeah, she she knows everything about the Green Man. Um, okay, yeah. Tom Waits as the devil is really good in that. And actually, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus is a really, really good movie. I'm but, telling uh, the story it. again. So that the planet... It's uh, Heath Ledger's last flick, actually. ...can continue to exist. But it seems like of all the artists, musicians <coughs> are the ones that are the most obsessed with this secret knowledge. They, like me, want to get the message out there and want to communicate to you what they know, so they, like me, integrate it into their art. They write songs about it. People like Katy Perry, uh, they might do it because, you know, they're told to do it, I don't know. But her music videos are total esoteric head trips. Oh boy, esoteric head trips. Look at all this symbolism. All Once right. at the Super Bowl, she famously <coughs> depicted the woman riding the beast described in Revelation. I used to be a really good singer. Chris Cornell is my favorite vocalist and I could belt Cornell. So I became pretty familiar with Soundgarden. Half of the Soundgarden library is about things that happen around the apocalypse. He is so genuinely fucking cringe. Cornell's signature was even the Alpha and the Omega turned upside down, and a lot of his album art was different apocalyptic images, like the sunflower is obviously the black it hole sun with the Medusa sunburst crown. Bad Motorfinger has a similar black hole sun symbol, except oh, it's- no, I see your Lord 2023 and he's dead ass repeating vigilant Christian Mario videos from 2014 about Katy Perry. <laughs> designed angled like a microwave magnetron and in the center it has a pyramid and in the center of that is a spark plug is he gonna say chris cornell killed himself because he was burdened by the truth of the green man please don't just in case you couldn't tell that this is depicting a plasma event. Tarot cards are another great way that these symbols and concepts are kept alive. Your local witch probably has a few decks. I don't really use these, I just like the art. Especially with the Hermetic deck. Looking at these cards sets my brain on fire. I wish I had the patience to sit here and describe every secret piece of symbolism to you. I'm sorry I don't. But an important one is the Masonic concept of the two paths or the two pillars. There's two paths you can possibly take in life. The light path, the good path, or the path of darkness, the path of evil. I totally disagree with that. <laughs> there are many paths to take, much broader than two. Celebrities will often post pictures of themselves covering one eye in a clever way. Usually that's their way to sort of advertise which path they've chosen. Now I shouldn't have to make a case right. for why the path of darkness is bad. But the path of light is not by default good. The path of light is the light that Yahweh would want you to take. That's the godly way. The path of darkness <laughs> is the path of Azazel. The path of Satan. That's the one that binds you here. You don't want to be bound here. See, the God that has lived his life as a human being knows better. Both of those choices are the wrong choice. Jesus taught us the concept of the narrow path. Except they forgot to write down in the Gospels what the narrow path means. It's based on the two pillars. The narrow path is the center path. It's radical centrist. Let's go. Let me explain. You think you're doing the right thing by being godly, but by being godly, you're ignoring your basic animal needs. You are still a human. You are still stuck in this body. Yes, you are as a god, uh -oh. but you still have to satiate the carnal needs of the body that you inhabit. You're goddamn right I do, Greg. My carnal needs remain unsatiated and daily, like Sisyphus, I try. But I will, I will never 
reach the sun. My path to hedonism continues. You still have to love yourself. We have to eat. We need food. We have to love. We need to satiate our hearts. We need to have sex. We need to exercise our libidos. When we deny ourselves our basic human needs, <clears throat> it creates a sickness in our head. And this is what no pussy does, obviously. Holy shit. Catholic priests used to marry. Even the Pope had a wife. Then all of a sudden they decided it would be virtuous to become abstinent. And then all of a sudden a sickness grew into the heads of the priests. Suddenly sickness. their minds started justifying abhorrent impulses. Suddenly their egos started justifying evil acts. But at the same time we have to recognize that we're better than this. We deserve better than this. And to ascend beyond this, we have to constantly strive to improve ourselves, to become more godly. But you can't do that at the sacrifice of your basic carnal needs. You have to walk the path right down the middle. Under your- Be a, be a decent person and also if you want to fuck and eat food, do that. Okay, yeah. Sure. Always law. Man, we have to follow so only the path of good. Full of itself. But that's impossible. Anyways, I shouldn't have to explain why Catholic... He's hard to watch, but I also can't not watch. <laughs> you fuck... That's true. That's true. <laughs> Priests are evil. I was... Greg started on YouTube after escaping a Christian cult and becoming an atheist. If it ends with him becoming a Christian conspiracy theorist, we'll have achieved a perfectly circular character arc. It's beautiful, isn't it? The choir boy. I know. I'm fine. But I was close enough to that shit. It shook me. The Catholic Church has always been a force of evil for humanity. <clears throat> Just look at the institutions that they've had here in Canada. I agree. The residential schools and the way that they used to treat natives. Their hospitals and the way that they used to treat the poor. And their orphanages and the way that they used to treat people without families. The stories that came out of those facilities are disgusting. And they did all that in the name of Jesus. What an insult. It's like all of reality is gaslighting me. So that... I think that's what we call a delusion. Like if, if the entirety of reality is gaslighting you, that's a delusion. <laughs> yeah, a, a, quite a revealing sentence, true. Pretty much concludes my entire purpose on this channel, okay. to be honest. I mean, I have a lot more video ideas. Don't kill me yet. I got a lot more stuff that I want to teach you, but uh, this was everything I had to tell you. This was everything I set out to tell you. Being almost entirely alone for two years, I learned from these lockdowns that- Oh, fuck. That I need to live. Oh God, dude. A lot more things I got to get out of life, you know? I don't know really what I want to do next. So if you need me, I'll be wandering the earth to and fro. But you know what guys, after everything that I've ever pushed on you in this channel, all the crazy theories, the silly cartoons, eight years of content. Jeez. If you take away two things from me, okay. if you remember two things, right. follow the center path. Be good to yourself and be good to others. Strive for perfection, but acknowledge your failures. That's, is that one? And second of all, okay, yeah. all right, so, all right. Learn to love. Love yourself, love others, and learn to accept love from others. I feel like that's the same thing. Uh, sure, I agree, though. Sincerely. Learn sincerity. Learn sincerity. Wow. Performing sincerity, Greg, is what you're doing. You are performing sincerity. I, I, mean, I mean, that's the vibe you give me. You do not give me the vibes of a sincere person. You know, they give me the vibes of someone who is giving me, like you said, a character, right? 
Yeah. I'd love to talk to you about this. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think you're going to like the conversation because I think it's a lot of it's funny. But if you can handle that, uh, and I'll try not to be a dick. I just think like, oh, I'm fucking Jesus is hilarious. So I'd love to talk to, to you about this, Gregory. Gregory. So to bring this all back to the question at the beginning of the video, who is Jesus? Who is Lucifer? Uh -huh. Well, the answer is I am getting sick and tired of everyone mixing this up. <laughs> well, this has been my TED. Oh, my fuck. That like hurt me, dude. Like just that clip. <laughs> well, this is. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on one second. It's just you guys for a sec. Bring this up. <laughs> well, this has been. Oh, God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sewer. So My TED Talk. I love you guys. Okay. Well, all out of hinges, aren't we? All plumb out. Got a hinge? Nope. Entirely unhinged. Couldn't couldn't find a hinge if I needed one. It has the juice. You and Hannah did a chick track with him. Who's more insufferable, Greg or Chick? Chick. Jack Chick? Well, he's dead. Jack Chick died. Thanks for the biddies. Yeah, so, yeah, that was an ordeal. I agree. Yeah, an ordeal is a great way to, to put it. Uh, Greg is going through an ordeal. Yeah.